This conference will now be recorded. So in today's session, we are going to discuss about sandbox and we have to understand what exactly is sandbox and what we can do with the help of sandbox in Salesforce and how to create our own sandboxes and from where we can create the sandbox and who will create these sandboxes inside your Salesforce org? And once the sandbox has been created, how can we log in into the sandbox? What is the login URL that we have to use to log into the sandbox? And what type of sandboxes are available in Salesforce? And what are the various environments that we are using for the project architecture? This is also called as a project landscape. So what are the various stages that each project should come across? And then how to build the code inside the sandbox and how to deploy the code to the production environments. Okay, we'll see practically. So today we'll see sandbox creation, how to create the sandboxes in Salesforce, and then once a sandbox has been created, how to map the connection between those sandboxes, how to do the deployments, what are the various deployment mechanisms that we have in Salesforce, and what is the ready-made approach given by Salesforce, and how to use that to build the code, to deploy the code to the other environments, we'll see practically. Now, so first of all, we have to understand what exactly a sandbox. Now, so let me explain your small general scenario first. <clears throat> then I will explain what exactly the concept of sandbox. Okay, now. Assume that I have an organization. We have an organization like some ready labs. Okay, we have an organization, some ready labs. That already we know ready labs is one of the pharmaceutical manufacturing organization. Ready labs is one of the pharmaceutical manufacturing organization. They are purely doing some research on the various diseases, and based on their diseases, okay, they are going to be finding some solution for each and every disease. Based on their solution, they're preparing a formula. Based on the formula, they're preparing a medicine. Through the medicine, they're curing the people's diseases. So as part of this Ready Labs organization, they have started this company almost 30 to 40 years back. 30 to 40 years back, they have started this organization with some 10 employees. With some 10 employees. They have only 10 employees are available inside this company. Okay, while well, starting this company 30 to 40 years back, okay, they're having only 10 employees. These people are experts in doing the research on the various diseases. These are purely the pharmacy people, they're experts in that domain. These people are scientist people here. They keep on doing the research on the various diseases. They're preparing some medicines. Okay, now. So now in this case, to automate this entire pharmaceutical manufacturing process, they have built an application at that time with the help of VB programming. By using Visual Basic. VB means Visual Basic. Because 30 to 40 years back, we don't have Java, we don't have Dartnet, we don't have SAP, we don't have Salesforce, Hadoop, data science, nothing. We are having very legacy programming at the time. Like we are having Pascal, Cobol, mainframes, 
we are having c c plus plus we are having vb programming okay vb programming visual basic from microsoft this is very much popular at the time now slowly they did some extensions for the vb now they have changed it as vb.net that means .net framework is purely built upon by using this vb programming here now so vb is very very popular at that time so in this case during that time that years back they don't have any modern programming languages like as java .net and then salesforce nothing so at that time they are having very popular programming that is vb by using that vb programming they have built an application which they are using to automate their entire pharmaceutical manufacturing process so by using that vb application itself they are storing their own business data like their department's data and then they are storing the scientist people's data also the research data also their formulas information employees information payrolls information sales information products information everything so whatever the products they are manufacturing the whole products data their entire business data they are automating with the help of the vb programming so now from there onwards are keep on using the same vb programming here now their business is slowly growing Okay, their business is slowly growing. So now, after this of 30 to 40 years, now they are having almost 40,000 employees are available here. Now they are having 40,000 employees. They have expanded their business to various countries. They have started so many R&D centers in different different locations. They have recruited so many employees also to do some research on the various diseases. Some people are working in R&D center. Some people are working in sales. Some people are working in production. Some people are working in service. Some people are working in marketing. So many people are available here. Almost they're having 40,000 employees are available. They have expanded the business to so many countries that are having their business in the entire world. But still they're using the same old VB application to store this whole business data. Still, they're using the same VB application, the world legacy application, still they're continuing that. Because they have built the whole functionalities at that time, from that they keep on using that, because application is very stable. No issues in the application. Now, so initially, the application has given very faster performance. Why? Because they're having only 10 employees are available at that time. So now with the 10 employees, okay, it is giving very faster performance. Application was working very fine, but slowly they're recruiting some more new employees also. These new people are also accessing the same application. Now in this case, if I'm going to be accessing, if all the 40,000 people are accessing the application at the same time, it is giving some issues. Okay, it is giving some issue because we are applying some more load on my application. Because every application is having some specific peak limit is available. If you are applying some load more than the peak load, automatically application will get crash. Now, so in this case, say like for example, come to a small scenario. Assume that I can carry some 50 kgs of weight. If it is some 25 kgs of weight, I can carry very easily. If it is 50 kgs, I can carry here. If you are putting some 100 kgs weight on me, then I can't carry. Okay, I can't move ahead. That means what? You are applying some more than the peak load. Here also, for the application, upon building the application, they are going to be using an architecture. That architecture indicates how many people max they can access the applications. So now, previously, they're having only 10 employees are available so that only the 10 employees are accessing the application it is working very fine. Now, 40,000 people are available. Now, all these 40,000 people are trying to be accessing the same application. But in this case, okay, but in this case, in this case, it is giving so many issues. Sometimes, application is not responding properly. Sometimes, application is terminating in the middle of the processing. Because of that, I'm losing some data. So, in this case, the people are getting irritated with this application here. Because if all the people are accessing the application, it is giving so many issues. 
then finally they have decided that they don't want to continue with this vb application here because it is giving so many issues because of that they're losing some data also for that reason they would like to build a new application by using a modern programming language that too they want to go with a cloud functionality because till now they're using vb application vb is purely on premise we have to install into a local system we have to maintain a server in that server we have to install the application we have to keep on upgrade that software inside the server every year also so keep on we are doing some huge investment okay in order to maintain that server but now we don't want to continue with this vb application anymore we want to migrate our application to cloud so that we can avoid the investments also we can reduce our investments also we can do some cost cutting so now in this case they want to build that application the same functionalities they want to build by using a new modern programming which is purely supporting the cloud functionalities so finally they have decided salesforce finally they have decided salesforce okay they want to build this application by using salesforce now who can build this application inside the ready labs they are having 40000 employees but is all these 40000 people are pharmacy people they are scientist people they know how to run the business they know how to prepare the medicines they know how to find out some solutions or formulas for the diseases they know how to do some research on the various diseases but they don't know salesforce they don't know how to write the code then who will build this application for that one they have contacted tcs company here they have contacted tcs company here tcs people are ready to build the application okay on salesforce okay for the client ready labs okay for the client ready labs tcs people are ready to build the application by using this modern programming which is a cloud for programming that is salesforce now in this case here from today onwards tcs people are going to be building an application for the client ready labs by using salesforce now tell me in this case if the tcs people wants to build an application that require a salesforce account right yes because they are asking us to build the application on salesforce we got the complete requirement documents also everything we are ready to start implementing the application to develop that application we require some resources we require salesforce accounts we require few licenses also then who will provide that license now tcs people has to buy or ready labs people has to provide now simple concept here assume that in my hometown i am having some land or i am having some space i would like to construct a house in that one a g plus one okay apartment i would like to construct so that i have recruited some two construction persons over here he is the one person he is the second person here these people are having experience in the constructing the houses now they are ready to build the house for me okay what are the design that I have given here now to construct the house these people need some resources right from iron cement bricks sand we need so many resources who needs to provide these people will take care of everything no i need to provide why i am the owner of the house i am the property owner as a property owner so in order to construct the house okay whatever the resources the manpower is required i need to provide all these resources if i am giving the resources based on the resources they will construct the house for me okay whatever the design that we have selected like the similar way whenever if the tcs people are ready to construct the application they are ready to build the application for the client ready labs to build that application whatever the software resources are required whatever the hardware resources are required whatever the tools are required whatever the licenses are required everything has to be provided by the client itself ready labs has to provide because tcs people are what they are doing simply we will build the application to build the application whatever the resources are required you have to provide everything then only i will construct the application then only i will build the application for you because this application not building for my employees this is not building for our organization this is for your organization this is for your employees your customers your partners your end users not for our employees 
So to build the application, whatever the resources are required, all the resources has to be provided by Ready Labs. So Ready Labs people has to buy a Salesforce account. Okay, Ready Labs people has to buy a Salesforce account. Can we go with the free developer edition? No, because free developer edition is having very limited okay, capacity. It is having very less data storage, 5 MB of storage space only, we know that. 5 MB of data storage, 20 MB of file storage. Now tell me, so for me, it's sufficient. Because as an individual person, to do the practice, 5 MB is sufficient for me here. For ready lab, that 5 MB is sufficient here? No. Within two minutes, they will the, the whole 5 MB will full. So now in this case, they want to run the business lifelong. So they would like to have some more storage space. For that one, they have to go for a licensed account. So now in this case, Ready Labs people are going to be purchasing a Salesforce account. The Ready Labs people will buy a Salesforce account. What editions are purchasing? Unlimited edition. Okay, they are purchasing an unlimited edition of Salesforce by contacting Salesforce.com or Salesforce.com partners also. Okay. Now, in order to buy a Dell laptop, you no need to go to the Dell manufacturing company here. You can go to Dell showrooms also. Okay. We are having so many Dell showrooms are available. These are nothing but the partners. Like the similar way, if you want to buy the Salesforce account, if you want to buy a Salesforce license, you no need to contact Salesforce.com organization. You can contact Salesforce partners also here. In the entire world, entire world, we are having so many Salesforce partners. We can contact any one of the Salesforce partner. We can buy a Salesforce account also for your organization. So now in this case. Today, Ready Labs people are going to be purchasing a Salesforce account, which is of type unlimited edition, which is a unlimited edition of Salesforce. Because in unlimited edition, we are having the more data storage. We are having some more capabilities. We are getting some more customizations. We can do some more implementations also. We will be getting some free support also from Salesforce. Now here in this case, Sales Ready Labs people are purchasing a Salesforce account, which is of type okay, unlimited edition by investing some huge amount. Now, now tell me, whenever Ready Labs people are going to be purchasing a new Salesforce account, what Salesforce people will do? Salesforce people are going to be creating a new Salesforce account for Ready Labs. Creating the Salesforce account means what? Creating the Salesforce account means what? What Salesforce people will do? Right. They're allocating some amount of memory. Depends upon the country from which they are originated. Depends upon the country from which they're running the business. They are going to be allocating the memory space in the associated regions available server. So creating the Salesforce account means what? Reserving some amount of memory space in the associated regions available server. Okay. Understood the concept now? Now. So now in this case, today, Salesforce people are going to be reserving some amount of memory space in one of the Salesforce associated region servers. Now, let's see. In this case, what these people will do. Now let me explain. Now, they're having this server here. They're having this a Salesforce server. So this is a Salesforce server. Assume that this is a AP okay, 16 server. AP 16 server. Because Ready Labs is from India. Okay, Ready Labs is from India. So their headquarters is also in India. So that here they are going to be selecting the country name as India in the registration form. So that Salesforce is allocating the memory space for this ready labs in the India associated region available server. India will come under Asia Pacific region. In Asia Pacific region, we are having 29 servers are available. AP 0 to AP 28. So totally 29 servers are available. In these 29 servers, they're reserving some amount of memory space. They're purchasing unlimited edition of Salesforce. Now tell me, upon purchasing an unlimited edition of Salesforce, how much memory space that Salesforce allocates? Hmm. 10 GB what? Hmm. Data storage, right? 10 GB file storage, right? Totally 
20 GB memory will be allocating by sales. So they're allocating 20 GB of memory space inside this AP16 server. Because for unlimited edition and for the professional edition, for the enterprise edition, Salesforce is allocating the store data storage as 10 GB, file storage as 10 GB. For the essential edition, one to 10 GB data storage, one GB file storage, 11 GB here. Okay, now they are purchasing an unlimited edition of Salesforce. So Salesforce people are going to be reserving some amount of memory space. They're reserving some amount of memory space. Now, the reserving some amount of memory space. Now, this allocation of this memory space process is called as what? Creating a Salesforce.com account or a Salesforce.com organization and simply an art. Now, this is the Salesforce.com organization. This is the Salesforce.com organization. Now, so now here, this is for Ready Labs. This is for Ready Labs. This is Salesforce account is belongs to Ready Labs. Each and every organization will be having an organization ID, right? Yes, organization ID. For example, for this organization, the ID is 00D44559. This is the ID of this is salesforce.com organization. This is the ID of this salesforce.com organization. Now here Salesforce is allocating some amount of memory space. Now that is nothing but Salesforce account. Now this is Salesforce account is purely a production account. Okay, this is purely a production account. Production means what? Live. It's a live application here. Okay, it's a live account. Okay, it's a live application which is accessing by the customers, partners, end users, employees. Everybody is accessing this account here. So this is purely your production account. Now, so now here in this case here, production means what? Live application. Okay, production means live application. Now Salesforce people has created a Salesforce application for the Ready Labs client, okay, inside that production server here. Now, this is a production account. Now, Ready Labs people has granted the permission on this application to the TCS people so that TCS employees can join my account and they can able to work on the application. So now tell me in this case here, as a developer, where we can work on? Can I work on this production directly? No, production server, we can't touch. We can't touch the production servers here because if something went wrong, like if something went wrong, data will be lost. Losing the data means what? Losing the business, losing the revenue, losing the credibility in the market also so that I don't want to work on the production. We can't play with the production. So now in this case, where we can develop the application, where we can build the application. For that one, we require a separate environment. Okay, we require a separate environment where exactly we can develop the application functionality, we can test the application functionality. Once it is working fine, then we can install to that client's environment. For that one, we need a separate environment here. That separate environment is called as Sandbox. Okay, in order to build your own Salesforce application, we require a Salesforce environment that is called as Sandbox. Okay, now, so what exactly a sandbox? Sandbox is nothing but a Salesforce environment. Whatever the way you are accessing this Salesforce account, similar fashion we can access that. Whatever the features that we have in your Salesforce account, same is available in the sandbox over here. But the difference is this is live, that is your own. Okay, that application, that sandbox can be accessible only by that administrator or the sandbox owner. So now this live application can be accessible by my customers, my partners, my employees, end users, everybody can access that here. Okay, now, so now here in this case, here, let's see. In order to build your own application, we require a separate Salesforce environment that is called as Sandbox. What exactly is Sandbox? Sandbox is nothing but a Salesforce environment. 
it's a virtual environment it's a temporary environment where exactly we can develop the applications we can test the applications we can integrate the application with the third party systems we can give some demos to the client also and then we can able to give some end user training also because once application development has been done we have to give a demo to the client this is what the functionality we have implemented the client will look into the whole functionality over here okay now so not during that okay demo if there is any small small changes are required they are going to be giving the changes here so we need to implement the changes then again we have to give that one more demo once the client is okay then we need to install the application to the client's environment here now in order to give the demo also we are using that sandbox and then once application has been handed out to the client who will use that application their customers their partners their employees everybody but those people are new to salesforce they don't know what is salesforce how to log in how to access this feature how it will work they don't know we have to give some training also to them okay we have to give some training also to them so that in order to give the end user training also we are using that sandbox so sandbox is nothing but a salesforce environment or a salesforce account which is a virtual account which is a temporary account which is used to build your own salesforce applications and where we can develop our own applications we can build your own business logics we can design your own user interfaces we can test the functionalities we can integrate with the third party systems we can give the demos to the client and we can give some end user training also to do this all this operation we require a separate salesforce account that is called as sandbox then how to create this sandbox here who will create this sandbox from where they will create the sandbox sandbox creation options are always available from production sandbox creation can be always done from production inside the production account you will be having an option called as sandboxes okay you will be having the option called as sandboxes don't search for your you know developer account here in developer account we don't have sandbox options okay no chance to create sandboxes in free developer account here okay now in the other accounts here, like as it may be like as essential it may be professional enterprise unlimited okay in these accounts we are having sandbox options are available okay now in free developer edition there is no concept of sandbox so that option is not available but there is an alternative mechanism i will show you with live today here now so now here in this case here as part of this is salesforce we require a sandbox account sandbox is nothing but also like as a salesforce environment where we can build our own applications we can test and we can able to give the end user training we can give some demos to the client also then who will create this sandbox administrator only the administrator not even developers also only the administrator is having the rights to create a sandbox when whenever a new member join the team whenever a new developer join the team for every developer they are allocating a separate sandbox for every developer they are allocating a separate sandbox so now the same sandbox credentials we can't share to multiple developers here it will be raising some conflicts for that reason for every salesforce developer okay they are allocating a separate sandbox each sandbox will be having a separate license that license also purchased by the ready labs only here okay those licenses also purchased by ready labs only here now in this case here for each and every salesforce developer they are going to be running a separate sandbox suppose in future once you join your company also as a salesforce developer for you also they are allocating a separate sandbox in that sandbox we need to implement not in our free developer edition not in the production account over here then who will allocate the sandbox to you your administrator inside your team there is one member is available who is acting like as administrator here that administrator will create a sandbox from where from production from production sandbox should be always creating from production here not from sandbox to sandbox always sandbox should be creating from production so your administrator is going to be creating the sandbox from the production here now now that sandbox login credentials they will provide to you from there you have to work on this here now in this case whenever we are building this a project here upon working on that project 
each project will be come across the various stages each project should come across the various stages like for example as a human being in our human life cycle we are coming across so many stages here like initially we were in child age then we are entering into teenage and then engage and then old age these are certain stages that are available in our human life cycle every human being should come across all these stages like the similar way as part of project development every project should come across the various stages those stages are also called as environments those are called as project environments here now this all these environments is also called as a project landscape this is called as a project landscape now as part of this project environments we are having multiple environments will be available like as we are having development environment and then we have testing environment and then we have uat environment and then we have stage environment and finally we are having production okay finally we are having production okay so now here we are having development environment QA or UAT environment, sorry, the testing environment, then UAT environment. UAT means user acceptance testing. Okay, user acceptance testing. So whenever if anybody is from computer science background, okay, during their computer science background, they might be learning one subject called as software engineering. Okay, the learning a subject called as software engineering from Ragas Pressman. So there they are clearly describing that what are the various models are available for the project development like as waterfall model and then iterative model rad models also fish models also and then agile methodologies also what are the various environments we would like to have like as development environment qa environment testing environment uat environment various types of testing functional testing regression testing retesting security testing performance testing compatibility testing everything they will be describing inside that software engineering concept over here software engineering concept is mainly focusing on the project development life cycle it's not concentrating on the technical part it is concentrating on the process part here how the project has to be get developed what kind of stages the project should come across what is the functionality of each and every stage those will be focusing on software engineering concept over there okay now so now here also okay here also they are going to be using one of that methodology here they can use some scrum methodology also as part of agile or waterfall model also scrum model also iterative model also rad model also anything so now the people are going to be building that application upon building the project they are going to follow in the various environments now these environments are not only for salesforce this is common for every project for every technology including c c++ java dotnet sap oracle wherever you go this project landscape is common fixed it's not related to salesforce it's a common project application development process okay now this is comes under software development life cycle process over here now in this case here generally when you go to the java or dotnet somewhere so they will be having that separate server is available here where exactly they are going to be deploying the application we are having some four developers are available each developer is having their own systems are available laptop or desktop in our laptop we are developing the application we'll do the testing we can deploy to that other environment like the similar way here also to develop the application to test the application we require an environment that is called as sandbox okay now so now here depends upon your project architecture depends upon the environments which you are going to use for your project they are going to be designing that various environments also now who will create this environments that will be created by the architect people the solution architect is going to be preparing what kind of environments that we need to maintain depends upon the project functionalities depends upon the complexity of the functionalities depends upon the number of modules they will decide what kind of environments that we need to maintain here okay now as part of this project development life cycle we are having this various environments like we will be having the stage environment here we will be having stage environment we 
this is a stage environment and you will be having uat environment here and then you will be having qa environment and then you will be having development environment Kid development environment. These are the various environments. We are having development environment, QA environment, which is also testing environment. This is a UAT environment. This is a stage environment. Finally, we are having production. These are the various environments we used to maintain. Now, this complete okay architecture of these environments is called as project landscape. It is called as project landscape. Now, these are the various environments. Now, so this is the development environment. So, this is the development environment. This is the QAR testing. QAR testing environment. It is a UAT environment. UAT means what? User acceptance testing. Okay, UAT stands for user acceptance testing. User acceptance testing. And this is the stage environment. This stage environment is also called as a pre-prod. That means pre-production. Okay. Now, these are the four various environments are available. These environments are nothing but sandboxes. These are all our sandboxes. This is a sandbox. is a sandbox this is also a sandbox this is also a sandbox this is also a sandbox these are all our sandboxes this is a live okay this is the live application it's a production Except the production, whatever the other environments that we have, these are all our sandboxes. Now, so in this case, these are all our separate Salesforce annual accounts. These are all our separate Salesforce accounts over here. This is one separate account. This is another account. This is another account. This is another account. But these are all are linked with this particular production over here. Now, so in this case here, we are having this various Salesforce environments are available. These are nothing but the Salesforce accounts. Now, so in this case here, how do we know whether it is a sandbox or production? How do we know? Production in the sense what, which can be accessible by the live customers. It's a live application. Customers, partners, end users, employees, everybody can access live application, which is having live data, which is having some live functionalities are available. But these are accessible only by the employees here. Other people can't access. Not all the employees, only developers, administrators. That's it. Not the other people also. Now, so now here in this case, so let's see. How do we know whether it is a sandbox or a production? Simple, straightforward options over here. Based on the server number, we can understand whether it is sandbox or production. Okay, based on that server number itself, we can understand whether it is sandbox or production. Now, let me explain to you. How do we know? If it is a production, if it is a production server, production server numbers are always starting with either NA or EU or AP. If the server number is starting with either NA or EU or AP, these are purely production servers. Simple state forward option. Now, if it is a sandbox,
if it is a sandbox sandbox servers are always starting with cs sandbox server names are always starting with cs cs means customer sandbox cs stands for customer sandbox okay now so now based on the server number itself we can able to understand is it production or is it sandbox in sandbox you can do whatever you want okay, in sandbox you can do whatever you want you can build some functionality you can remove you can do anything whatever you want nothing will be impacting on the life if you are something do you are doing some wrong functionality on the production it will be impacting on your business for that one we can't touch the production directly we have to work on sandbox environment do the thorough testing and then after that do the integration if requires give the training to the end users give a demo to the client and finally we can move it to the production okay now so now here in this case in order to know whether it is sandbox or production we can just we can look into that server numbers based on the server number we can understand is it sandbox or production sandbox servers are always available on cs servers starting with the cs like a cs4 cs16 cs21 cs22 like that then the production servers are always starting with na or eu or ap okay now so now here in this case how can we log in into this sandbox over here generally to log in into this production how can we use this one your free developer account is nothing but your sandbox here sorry your production now how to log in into your free developer account what is the url https login.salesforce.com that's it this is a url in order to log in into your production we are using the help of this url called as login.salesforce.com suppose if it is a sandbox then what we can do but this is a sandbox we are using the help of a url called as test.salesforce.com test.salesforce.com this is a url for each and every sandbox we have to follow the same url now in order to log in into the sandbox we have to use this url https test.salesforce.com for the production we have to use login.salesforce.com okay the login screen from there everything is same just only that login url is different we are not using login.salesforce.com we are using test.salesforce.com okay when you join into the real time organizations as a developer don't use that login.salesforce.com that is only for your personal account okay login.salesforce.com is only for free developer edition that too for your personal account here when you go to the real time organizations we are purely working on sandbox okay we are purely working on sandbox sandbox you can log in by using test.salesforce.com it will load the login screen you can log in with your credentials username and the password then who will create the sandbox for you your administrator once you join the team your project manager will inform to the administrator dear administrator so he is also one of the new member is joining our project from today onwards please allocate a sandbox to him he will be creating administrator will create a sandbox will be allocating to that person from there he can log in with his credentials okay each developer will be having their own sandbox now in this case here as part of this is sandbox now so what kind of sandboxes are available over here now let me explain as part of this sandboxes we have four types of sandboxes available in salesforce salesforce provides four types of sandboxes first one developer sandbox second one developer pro sandbox this is also called as configuration only sandbox third one partial copy sandbox fourth one full copy sandbox okay developer developer pro partial copy full copy these are the four okay these are the four types of sandboxes are available here 
Now, so for which environment, which a type of sandbox we will use? Now, let me explain. As part of this development environment, as part of this development environment, they are purely using developer sandbox. They are purely using developer sandbox. They are using developer sandbox. Now, for this QA environment, they are using developer pro. Developer pro sandbox. For UAT, they are using partial copy sandbox. Partial copy sandbox. For the stage environment, they are indicating that they are providing full copy sandbox. Full copy sandbox. Okay, full copy sandbox. These are the various environments over here. Okay, understood the concept now? Now, these are the four environments that we have development environment, QA, UAT, stage, and the finally we are having production. It's a common question in every interview. It gets a common question in every interview as part of your current project. What is the landscape that you are using? Or what are the various environments that we have for your current project? Then don't say like as okay, development environment, QA environment, like that here. Don't use this word environment every time again and again and again. They will start off it's like as a bookish knowledge here. So now just we can use that simply the environment name. That's it. We are using development environment, QA. UAT stage and the prod environment. That's it. Done. Now, for which environment, which type of sandbox that we are using? We can explain them. For development environment, we are using developer sandbox. For QA, developer pro. And for the UAT environment, partial copy sandbox. For the stage, full copy sandbox. Okay. And finally, we are having production that is a live environment here. Okay. Now, next one here. So now as part of this sandbox is here, where exactly our work will start as a developer or as an administrator, where our work will start over here. Now, so now here in this case, our work is going to be starting from development environment here. Now they are going to be allocating the sandbox here. Assume that we have two developers are available here. Okay, we have two developers. Now, in this case here, each developer will be having their own system. Assume that this is the first developer here. Developer one is having his own system. Okay, developer one. And the developer two. Two developers are available here. For each developer, they're allocating a separate sandbox over here. Developer one, sandbox one. Now, second developer, developer two, sandbox two. For each developer, they're allocating a separate sandbox over here. Now, assume that the first sandbox is belongs to a developer that is called as some Ramesh. Ramesh Kumar, he is a developer here. He is using this sandbox one. Second sandbox is belongs to some Kiran Kumar. He is a second developer here. Okay, these are the two developers are available inside my team. Ramesh Kumar and the Kiran Kumar. These are the two developers. For these two developers, they have allocated two separate sandboxes over here. He is having his own credentials. He is having his own credentials. They can log in into that account. They can work on the features. Now, in this case. Now tell me, once a code has been implemented by these developers inside this sandbox, they can able to implement the code, they can implement the functionalities, they will do the testing. Once a testing process has been done, what we need to do now? I'm done with my task here. Tell him that myself, Ramesh Kumar, I'm done with my task. Then what can I do now? 
we have to share this code to the QA environment. That means I have to move this code for testing process over. I have to move this code for testing environment here. So that here we are going to be deploying the code. Whatever the code that you have implemented, we can deploy this code to that QA environment over here. We can deploy the code to the QA environment here. Okay, that means once the code has been implemented by the developers, this is the code we are deploying to the QA environment here. Now, so in this QA environment, who are all the people are available? Who are all the people are available? Test engineers. Okay, we are having test engineers are available, like as senior test engineers, okay, test engineers, all these people are available here. What these people will do, they will do the testing of my application. Because as part of your organization, these are our enemies over here. As a developer, okay, these are our enemies here. Because as a developer, we are keep on thinking how to build the application functionality here. Because we are always in the positive mind. These people are always in the negative mind here. They're going to keep on trying to break the application here. How to break this application? How to make the application to get crashed? How to find out some issues in the application? They'll keep on testing the application with different, different values because to make the application quality okay to make the application quality here now in this case here even though even though the people are trying to be accessing this application my application should not crash that is a major aim over here now so now here in this case these people are going to be keep on doing the various testing mechanism they will do the functional testing also performance testing also security testing also compatibility testing also regression testing also retesting also usability testing also everything they will do the testing processes over here upon doing the testing of this functionality inside this qa environment then if the application is giving any issue one of the feature is not working properly here what these people will do immediately they're informing to the developer boss in the inside this application in this sense of feature we found some okay issue inside the application upon giving this kind of values it is causing a very big exception message it is giving very error big error message here please fix this issue so immediately they're informing to the development team here immediately they're informing to the development team so as a developer it's our responsibility Okay. As a developer, it's our responsibility. We have to fix that code because we are the people who build the application. So we are responsible for the quality of the application here. So that we need to fix this issue and we have to resubmit the code for that retesting process. Now the testing engineers are going to be testing the application functionalities here. Now, in this case here, they are going to be performing the various types of testing over here. Like for example, they are doing the testing of functional testing. They will do the functional testing and then performance testing. Security testing. And then regression testing. Like that various types of testing they will do as part of this QA environment here. As part of this QA environment, they will do the various types of testing over here. Okay, now. So now here during this testing, if they found any defects, they are going to be informing to the developer. Dear developer, we have identified some issues also. So please fix these defects also over here. Now, here we are going to be deploying this code. Here we need to deploy the code. Deploy. Here they are going to be indicating the defects. If there is any defects are available, they are informing to the developer. Dear developer, we have identified some defects over there. When you click on the button control, it has to do this operation. It has to show this result, but it is showing some different result here. So application is not working properly. Logic is not working properly. Now. So now here in this case here, we need to fix those issues and then we need to resubmit the code for the retesting process. Once the testing has been done by our internal QA team, that means these testing people are from our organization, from, from our team. 
once it is done then we are going to be deploying the code to that uat environment we are deploying the code to the uat environment user acceptance testing what is this user acceptance testing over here user in the sense the people who are using my application the people who are going to access application here those are nothing but customers partners end users okay those people are going to access that so in this case those people will do the testing this testing has been done by our internal team okay our qa team our testing people has tested the functionality but ultimately who is going to use the application customers are going to use those people will do the testing for that one we are having user acceptance testing here okay now here the client side business people will do the testing over here that means the business people from the client side the business people will do the testing over here once the uat has been done if there is no issues are available inside the application they are going to be signing up this application to move it back to that okay next environment that is stage this is a stage environment in this stage environment my code is available over here okay in this stage environment my code is available once the code is ready to deploy that means this is a pre production here okay it's a pre production now the code is ready now once the code is ready what needs to be done we need to give a demo to the client okay we need to give a demo to the client here like as when we go to the movies before releasing the movie they will be having a pre release event is available right now that is like as our pre production concept over here now we need to give a demo to the client client is going to be reviewing the whole functionality whether it is working properly or not so now in this case we are going to be giving a demo to the client also we are giving the demo to the client once the client is ready to okay accept this application then he will be giving the deployment window here that means we are requesting to the client boss please give me a suggestion a suitable time so that we can deploy this application to your environment so the client will be giving some time during the weekends okay generally deployment will be happening on weekends saturday and sundays also or else it will be outside of the business hours here after evening 6 o'clock or before okay morning 8 o'clock they would like to have that during the outside of the business hours will do the deployment so based on the deployment window given by the client we are going to be deploying this applications to that client environment over here. that means into the production once application is available inside the production then from there their customers their partners their end users their employees everybody can able to access the application now this application this is a live application this live application will be accessing by all the people over here customers partners employees end users everybody can able to access this application now end users all these people can access this application from their apps okay so these are the various environments that we are going to have as part of your project architecture that is also called as project landscape in this project landscape these are the various environments that we have because we are having development environment qa environment uat environment stage environment and finally we are having production environment okay this is the way the project should come across all the stages now so like the similar way as like as a human beings over here initially child age then teenage and then engage and then old age here okay everybody has to come across all these stages now tell me can we directly jump from child age to young age directly here no one more stage is there in the middle of this one we have to come across here also directly we can't deploy the application to the production we have to follow in the same approach over here each and every functionality should be come across with the same approach okay clear understood the concept now now so now here in this case here so this is the project landscape that we are going to maintain in our real time environment so that okay
now whenever we are moving this code to the production this is called as ga okay ga environment this is also called as go live ga means general availability okay general availability here ga means general availability now if for every four months you are getting some new releases right from salesforce it may be winter spring summer you are getting some new releases right there also they will follow the same same architecture they will be having some salesforce development team is available r d team the qe power building some functionalities new features they will do the testing also they will be doing deploying to the qe environment testing people will do the testing over here if there is any issues they are going to fixing those defects also then they will move the code to the uat the business people will do the testing of the functionality they are moving this code to that stage environment also stage means it is ready to deploy here now the client will be salesforce is giving a deployment window like as february 11th night at 10 30 pm to 10 35 pm five minutes so during that five minutes so now the technical team is deploying the code from stage to production here so everybody can able to access from there okay the same process they used to follow here in every organization for every project for every technology just this process will be common okay clear now now in this case here whenever if you want to work on this kind of environments i need to have sandboxes what can i do in free developer edition we don't have the concept of sandboxes then how can we create Okay, now let me explain. So during the time, during the edition types, I told you there are two types of editions are available from Salesforce. First one, paid editions. Second one, free editions. Right. Now, paid editions we are not purchasing because we are not investing money, so leave it here. And then we are having what? Free edition. How many free editions are available from Salesforce? Two types. What are those? The DDS file. And then we are having lifetime account that is also called as free developer. In free developer edition, we don't have sandboxes. Now, what is the next one? That is a style. That is what we are going to create now. In that is a style account, you are having 10 developer sandboxes. In that is a style account, Salesforce has given 10 developer sandboxes. So now I am going to create a that is a style account. From there, I would like to create sandboxes. Okay. So now in the TDS style account, Salesforce is providing 10 developer sandboxes here because to have a test how the sandbox look like, how to log in, how to map the connections between the sandboxes, how to do the deployment, to do that one Salesforce has given that option called as the TDS style account. In the TDS style account, we are having 10 developer sandboxes are available. No developer pro, no partial copy, no full copy. Only three developer editions, which okay, it will be having only developer sandboxes, only 10. Then how to create the TDS style account? Now let me show you. Just go to your browser, search for the option Salesforce. That it is free trial. Salesforce, that it is free trial. Yet there is an option is available, professional edition. That it is trial account means it's purely professional edition. Now tell me, professional edition offers what? What features are available in professional edition? Okay. Complete CRM functionalities are available. Okay, fine. Do we have four start com platform? No, no four start com platform. It offers complete CRM functionalities for any team size, but without any four start com platform. No four start com platform, no Apex, no Visual Force, no custom development, nothing. Purely configuration, only admin part here. Okay, that is the limitation. Now, so now here in this case, as part of this, we free account okay which is the 30 day style account we are having it's purely a professional edition over here 
just you can click on professional edition for 30 days trial i will be sharing this link also here inside my notepad for your reference now so now it is capturing your details automatically here because previously also for the previous best students i have created the sales for second also that's what it is capturing my details it is collecting the training you can the first name last name job title you can select any one of the job title here i have given my email id phone number company name number of employees country or region from which you are originated select the language select the checkbox i agree to the main services agreement and then click on start my free trial there is a button called as start my free trial now tell me have we given any username here no we haven't given any username if it is a free developer edition we have to provide the username but in this case that username also generating by salesforce for you by default because it's a 30 days trial account which can be accessible only for 30 days not more than that in this 30 days of time whatever the features you have implemented everything will be lost once the 30 days are over okay now please remember this point here we no need to provide any username that username also will be generating by salesforce automatically for you now click on start my free trial here i have given my email id here once you click on start my free trial it is going to be creating a new salesforce account directly it will jump into your salesforce account by default over here. now let's see directly it has been jumped into my salesforce account here now it is indicating this check your email to verify your account so that you can able to activate the account from next time onwards you can access enhanced wicked domain facility this is available here it is a common feature now we have to go to that this is a 30 days trial account it is indicating 30 days trial it is indicating how many days are left every day this value will be keep on decrementing by one like as 29 28 27 like that once it is zero to reaching to zero the account will be getting locked from there we can't access it now so this is the salesforce account here but don't touch this account over here go to your email whatever the email id that you have given over there go to your email account i'm logging into my email account you will be receiving an activation link from salesforce over here okay you will be receiving an activation link from salesforce now it is indicating this support at the red salesforce.com over here welcome to salesforce okay verify your account here. now it is indicating this just now my salesforce account has been activated successfully here so now it is going to be indicating this now this is a salesforce account activation link which is a 30 days trail account activation link over here now click on this link now when you go to this email you will be having your username this is a username generated by salesforce just you can copy that username here. This is my username. We can't decide the username by your own. That username also will be generating by Salesforce automatically by default over here. Okay? Now. now let's see. Just you can click on the verify account button. Okay, just you can click on the verify account button here. Now it will be providing the user interface to provide password confirm password security question and the answer no specify the password confirm password security question and the answer change password now this is my account right now here close that previous browser here now you can go to your account here this is our salesforce account here okay this is our salesforce account 
which is a that is a style account which is a production okay it's a production account how do we know this is a production or not how can we check server number where we can verify the server number Status. company information right company information link just you can go to that company information link go to the setup menu go to the company information link now what is the server number here ap16 now tell me is it a production or sandbox production or sandbox production sure okay now now in this case if the server numbers are starting with ap ma or eu then it will be a production straight forward say confidently to the people here they will try to confuse you in the interview point of yes or no yes or no yes or no don't change the answer fix with that answer here. now so now this is that production server here ap16 but now i want to create the sandbox i can't work on this production directly i want to create okay sandbox in that sandbox i would like to work on this now these are the four sandboxes i would like to create right now i want to create a dev sandbox the qba sandbox UAT stage. Okay, four sandbox accounts I would like to create. And then I would like to map the connection between these sandboxes also. Now, let's see how can we do this. How to create these sandboxes? Now, let me show you. Just to go to the setup menu, search for the option sandboxes. Excuse me. Just to go to this option sandboxes. Click on sandboxes. Now it is indicating what are the various sandboxes available inside your Salesforce arc. In my Salesforce arc, how many sandboxes are available? How many we have used? How many remains? Everything it will listen out here. Available sandboxes over here. 10 developer sandboxes, zero in use. Developer pro, zero available, zero in use. Partial copy, zero available. Full copy, zero available. So these are not available over here. We are having only 10 developer sandboxes. Okay. I want to create four sandboxes. First one, dev sandbox. Second one, QA. Third one, UAT. Fourth one, stage. Four sandboxes I want to create. How to create now? Let's see. Click on new sandbox button. Everybody has to complete this task today here. Okay, because if you want to know the deployment, how to deploy the code, sandboxes are mandatory. Without the sandbox, you can't do the deployment. Okay, now click on new sandbox button. Specify the sandbox name. Okay, specify the sandbox. Like here, I'm creating stage box. Stage box. This is a stage sandbox. This is a stage sandbox. Now create it from, from where you want to create this sandbox? Production. Always a sandbox has to be created from production, not from sandbox to sandbox. Now here, when you come down, it is indicating that, click on next button, click on create. Now your sandbox creation request will be getting initiated. This is in the queue. It will take some two to three hours of time here. Okay, it will take two to three hours of time to create the sandbox. Sometimes it will create within half an hour. Sometimes it will take one hour, two hours, three hours also sometimes over here. Sometimes it is taking seven hours also. Depends upon the availability of the Salesforce server, it will take some time to create the sandbox. If you are creating the sandbox today, but tomorrow you will be able to ready to do the deployment process over there. Next sandbox, click on new button, new sandbox. I'm indicating as UAT box. I'm indicating this is a UAT sandbox. This is a UAT sandbox. I want to create the sandbox from production. Click on next. Now, click on next. Click on create. 
Sandbox name should be always like as a single word. It should not have any spaces. No spaces, no numbers here. Next. Next one. New sandbox. I would like to specify QA box. So this is a testing sandbox here. It is a testing sandbox. Click on next. Click on create. So the third of a sandbox also is creating over here. These are in the queue right now. It is indicating seven available state. Click on new sandbox. Dev box. I'm indicating this is a developer sandbox. Developer sandbox. Click on next. Click on create. Now these are the four sandboxes are which are in the queue right now here. It will take some two hours or three hours of time to create the sandbox. Once the sandboxes has been ready, it will send the email notification to your email ID. Inside the registration form, whatever the email ID that you have given to that email ID, it will send the notification. Sandboxes are ready to use. You will get the notification. All the four sandboxes will be getting created. It will be indicating that clone option also. It will indicate the server number also. Organization ID also. Release type also. Everything it will be indicating that. But right now these sandboxes are, sandboxes are in okay, queue stage. It will take some time to prepare this one. Still they are into the queue. These are in the pending status over here. It will take some two hours of time to create the sandbox. Okay. Understood the concept now? Now, so create these four sandboxes today here. Create a free developer, create the TDS trial account first, and then create four sandboxes dev sandbox, QA box, UAT box, and then stage box. These are the four sandboxes here. You can give any name, whatever you want. Better you can follow the same structure. Okay, better you can follow same okay names over here because in the real time, these are the architectural navigations we used to follow. These are the environments we used to follow in the real time. Look like as development, QA, UAT, stage, and the production. Okay. Clear? Understood the concept now? Still there is the queue over here. Now. So do the practice on these features today here. Create these four sandboxes. By tomorrow morning, you will be ready with the sandboxes so that you can able to work on these functionalities. Tomorrow, I will show you how can we map the connection between the sandboxes. Once the sandboxes are ready, how to map the connection from dev to QA, QA to UAT, UAT to state, stage to production here. How to map this connection? And then once the connection mapping has been done, how to build the features in developer sandbox, how to move it to the QA, UAT, stage, and the production, I will show the complete live example end to end process. Because every day you are doing the same work. Every day they're allocating some requirement. You have to work in the development environment, move that uh, code to that QA environment over there. From there, they will do the testing process. After that, we can move to the UAT stage and the production friendly also. Okay. This is a regular process we have to do every day when you join that company here. So for that reason, this architectural process is very, very important to understand. Okay. Clear? So create this sandboxes today by creating a 30 days okay, trial account over there. Okay, tomorrow we'll see the deployment process by mapping the connections between these sandboxes. Okay. Thank you. Sir, in only 